Welcome back students. So, we are currently through our module 5. In the previous lecture, we have seen the higher propene, you know, hydroformalization. So, we converted the higher propene to alcohols directly. So, moving on, we then stay with the olefins, the alkenes in particular. And uh, today, in this lecture, we discuss the ethene oligomerization. So, the ethene oligomerization, what I will do is first I will uh, make you understand what do oligomerization means. Then uh, I will then discuss about the shop process. The shop process is shell higher olefin processes, the full form, so which uses a cobalt based process that is a cobalt based nickel. Then finally, I will compare all the, those processes or the hydroformylization process that is what we are doing is we will compare the alkene based processes, different alkene based processes. So, we know that the alkenes or the olefins are the important feedstocks for the chemical industry which includes linear 1 alkenes. So, when I talk about linear 1 alkene, it implies that is alpha alkenes. So, the double bond is at the alpha position. So, that is called 1 alkenes. So, if it is not, then it is some other, it may be beta, gamma, whatever the way it starts from the first carbon atom, the nomenclature. So, now we are considering about the alpha olefins. So, uh, in historically, they are synthesized by a thermal cracking of waxes. These waxes, as you might be aware, these are high molecular weight alkenes or it can also be obtained by the dehydration of alkanols. But both these processes, unfortunately, they are not in use, but the dehydration has again taken some importance. So, means the dehydration process has again come back and it is able to produce the alkenes. So, after mid 1970s, ethene oligomerization has only yielded the C4 to C18 alkenes. So, C4 C18 means uh, when I talk about 4 and 18, it means I am talking about both the linear alkenes as well as the branched alkenes. So, industries now have developed ethene oligomerization techniques, the majority of which are based on the Ziegler type catalyst. So, Ziegler not a catalyst, you must be aware these are developed and this was the path breaking discovery for the manufacture of polyethylene. So, with this we are able to use and produce low density polyethylene, high density polyethylene. So, which we will take up in a future lecture, this polymerization processes. But in general, uh, most of those oligomerization techniques are based on this uh, Ziegler type catalyst. So, the out of that, the well known process which we are going to study in this lecture is the shell or higher olefin process. So, shell higher olefin process is called a SHOP process, S-H-O-P. So, this is discussed here which differs from the conventional process in a number of respects. So, how does it differ from the conventional process? The conventional process means I am uh, actually linking it to the previous process, let us say the dehydration of alkanols or thermal cracking of waxes. So, if you see this is the difference between different four processes. The columns refers to the companies which they do, the Chevron, Ethyl, Smell, uh, Shell Shop. So, shell means company and shop is the process. So, you see uh, these are typical quantities of C6 to C18 1 alkenes in weight percent from various processes. So, if I compare you have these products uh, 1 alkenes, branched alkenes, internal alkenes, this is actually alkanes, then dienes and total monoalkenes. So, if you uh, do this, uh, if we uh, take out the different composition, you see the we are more interested in the 1 alkenes. So, 1 alkenes you have the highest in wax cracking and it, it keeps on increasing with chevron, ethyl process, the, the shop process. And if you see the shop process is the highest, this is the highest production of 1 alkene. So, 1 alkene production may be from C4 to C18. So, that we consider as 1 alkene. So, in that 1 alkene what happens is we are more concentrated on the lower part. Uh, because some of these lower parts are recently gaining attention like 1 hexene, 1 pentene, 1 heptene, 1 octene, all these compounds. But the long change alkenes, for example, those from C10 to C14, they are very useful precursors for the detergent manufacture. So, they may be used as in detergents because they are raw materials. If you recollect from the previous lecture, these raw materials are then sulfonated and forms the long chain fatty acid with the sulfonyl group. So, then uh, we consider branched alkenes, well this is not our internet product, but it does form. So, if it forms is the highest in wax cracking, chevron and ethyl is similar, then a shell process is the least. Then internal alkenes, internal alkenes means uh, you have uh, 
the branched alkenes or internal alkenes means uh, it is similar. So, it is also again similar percentage 312, 228, 128, 123. Then alkanes and dienes. The alkanes is uh, very less in the uh, less than 0.1 in the case of shell. Uh, dienes are almost non negligible or it is not present in either shell process or chevron process. Then the total monoalkenes, if I talk about the total monoalkenes, it means we have only one uh, aromat means monoalkenes means uh, if I want to draw it out, it can be like this. So, monoalkenes means whether it is here or, or it is here, it is immaterial. So, total composition we call it as monoalkenes. Okay. So, moving ahead. Now, what is new in this ethene oligomerization? So, I just want to make sure you understand what is the difference between oligomers and polymers. Then there is monomer. So, monomer is the starting material. Polymer as you know is a long chain of starting material which is monomer. Oligomers somewhere lies in between. It lies either between monomer to polymer. So, the chains are there, but it is not that long. Okay, they are not that long or it is truncated still a certain number that is we are called is oligomerization. For oligomerization unlike polymerization it will employ a different type of catalyst. So, for this oligomerization we have three reactions. One is the ethene oligomerization because you convert the ethene molecule, you connect all the ethene molecule together to form oligomer that is called oligomerization process. These are usually done in a series of reactors. It is not like you have only one reactor and you conduct oligomerization and finish it. No, they are conducting a series of reactors. Then you have the double bond isomerization and then you have the metathesis. So, what is double bond isomerization is something like this. Let us say you have this compound, it suppose it gets converted to this comes to the alpha position. So, that is called double bond isomerization. So, the the displacement of the double bond from let us say beta position to alpha position this is called double bond isomerization. Then what is metathesis? Metathesis is combination of two let us say I have this compound plus I have another compound let us say this compound. So, it may be combined let us say if it combines you have how many carbon atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here. So, let us say you are combining, let us say I make another one, let us say it is 8 here. So, we have 7 here and 8 chain. So, it may form, let us say uh, you have a form, either it can form 14. So, it can form, uh, let us say 2 molecules of hexene, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 2 molecules of hexene plus a remaining, uh, let us say if I balance it, the remaining, let us say you have this much. So, is it, uh, let, let me see if it is balanced, if not balanced we have to do it here. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, it is 15. So, 15 means uh, if I want to balance this out the carbon atom. So, uh, I can say uh, this is propene, this is propene. So, you, this is one, sorry, no, it is not propene. This will be your 1 pentene. So, this is and uh, maybe uh, I mean you can balance this out ultimately the carbon atoms will be remaining the same. My only issue is here it means metathesis uh, combination of the two chains with double bond to form smaller alkenes that is our motive to form smaller alkene molecules okay this is called metathesis. So, metathesis means like in organic chemistry we call A plus B equal to C. So, something like that you add A plus B is equal to C plus G. It means everything will be reacted, nothing will be left. So, it will be consumed in the reaction. So, these two reactions are very important. Uh, do not worry, I will provide these examples in detail. So, uh, why is it, it needed? Why is these three reactions needed? Because it uh, we need a high yield as well as the linear characteristics both. This actually the reason why shop process was developed by Shell, Shell company. So, demand for one alkenes in this range, the demand for run engine is growing faster than the demand of one alkenes in the C12 range. 
So C4 to C10 has given much more demand as compared to C12 plus range. C12 plus means I am talking about C12 to C20 till alkenes of C20 can be found. It has made the selective synthesis of light alkenes such as 1-butene, 1 1-hexene, one 1-actene one an important area. So these are very important because uh, middle uh, one from C11 to C14 are used in detergent while C12 plus has made uh, is not that important. C4 to C10 is much more important in this case because of its demand. So the shop process talks about the metathesis. So this is what I was, I mean, explaining. Anyway, you get a nice example here. So you see this alkane. Let's say you have an alkane here. This is R1, R2. These are two alkyl groups. So R1, R2 can be alkyl or hydrogen group, hydrogen atom. So R1, R2, R3, R4. These are all alkyl groups with different carbon chain lengths. So if, for example, R1, R2, this combines with R3, R4. So what it will do? In the chains will get swapped. So this you see is so R1, R3 and R2, R4. Such type of reactions are called the metathesis reaction. So overall, oligomerization is a catalytic chain growth reaction that is very similar to polymerization where the resulting chains are significantly shorter. So your condition for oligomerization is the resulting chain should be shorter. The crucial component is a homogeneous catalyst with an uncommon ligand. So the catalyst is the heart of the process. It is a homogeneous catalyst with an uncommon ligand. So we have here is a nickel based catalyst. So what happens in this nickel based catalyst, the nickel and hydrogen bond get uh, activated and this nickel and hydrogen bond attachment is used to allow the incoming alkenes to grow on top of this bond attachment. So I will discuss this catalytic process later. So this is the expression due to its size the ligand permits this because of the uh, a ligand is there which is usually a phosphine group. The ligand the phosphine permits oligomerization but hinders chain development due to the, to the polymer. So this catalyst has to be designed or has been designed in such a manner so it will allow the oligomers to form but it will not allow the polymers to form. So it means that if you are having this N plus 2 of ethene together you will form this compound where n can be anything between 0 to 18. So what is the amount of heat of reaction? The heat of reaction is close to minus 95 kilojoule per mole of ethene molecule used. So this is the way your heat of reaction is calculated. So in the Sharp process oligomerization of ethene results in linear 1 alkenes with chain lengths ranging from C4 to C40 process but problem is that will possess an even number of carbon atoms and a statistical distribution. So it means that you do a, a reaction. Okay. Now how will you know how much of the reaction is C4, how much C5, C6, C7, C8. Okay. So for that the distribution of these products are given by the anderson flory schools distribution. So this anderson flory schools distribution, the inventors of this distribution of this polymer chain actually is credited to where is in the fischer tropsch synthesis. In the fischer tropsch synthesis what they do is they convert the syn gas to alkenes. Okay. Syn gas, you convert the syn gas to alkenes. Okay. So we will see this later some definition this uh, I am sorry in the case in our case it is it will be alkenes but in, in what they have discovered is so this uh, syn gas is converted to some alcohol. We will see that alcohol and alkene. We will see that distribution in the next slide. So it says that it favors alkenes such as C20. So in the shell process, the C4 to C8 constitutes 40 percent of the normal general distribution. C10 to C18 comprises 40 percent, and the remaining 20 percent C20. Okay, so because uh, the demand for C4, C8 is more as compared to C10, C8 and C20. So what they do, they will combine the C10, C18 and C20 plus together to form this C4, C8. So but that is why we say it does not end up with the desired distribution of carbon numbers. So let us see this anderson flory uh, distribution. So if you see this uh, from uh, this uh, syn gas, we convert it to alkene. So the uh, hydrocarbon chain grows by adding a single carbon segment formed from carbon monoxide to the end of an already existing chain. 
So, the relative probabilities of chain growth and chain termination which is alpha and 1 minus alpha are independent of chain length and therefore constant. So, let us see this expression. So, this is a syngas. So, this is a fischer trough liquid and this fischer trough liquid is getting converted to alkane. So, this is what I discussed in the previous slide. So, how the distribution takes place? A similar distribution is being followed in the Sharp process. So, the distribution here syngas is converted to alkanes. With syngas, you have an initiation stage, you have a propagation step and you have a termination step. So, what is the termination steps? You can see the termination steps are to this side the lower end while the initiation propagation in the upper end. Okay. So, alpha is the fraction which is I mean this is like uh, initiation fraction. Termination is 1 minus alpha obviously. So, if some uh, molecule is getting added to it, it is getting initiated with the same alpha. Again CH3 another CH2 group gets added. So, get C2H5. So, you are, you are, now, you are trying to propagate the chain from C1 to C2 to C3 like that too. Let us say there are a number of intermediate chain propagation is happening. So, you form long chain hydrocarbon. Now, if they are terminated at each step, the termination is defined by the chain termination in factor that is 1 minus alpha. So, chain termination is 1 minus alpha. So, overall product availability is alpha into 1 minus alpha because you have already the I mean the unit is if I want to multiply it to 1. So, there is nothing entire raw material is there. So, 1 into 1 minus alpha. So, for ethane it will be alpha into 1 minus alpha because this alpha is the propagation. Like that if you keep on going to the nth chain it will be alpha n minus 1 2 into 1 minus alpha. So, this is the distribution that is the total probability of the formation of N alkanes from syngas. So, you should know the what is the probabilities for chain growth and what is the probability of chain termination. So, we multiply them respective to their powers you get the probability overall probability for the termination step. They found out that this type of distribution depends only on the catalyst employed which permit simple adjustment of the process to achieve required product yield. So, this hydrogen to carbon monoxide ratio and temperature is then used to adjust the selectivity with increasing temperature alpha decrease in value. So, what we know from this is that this distribution alpha is the function of catalyst type. Catalyst type and catalyst type and thus H2 to CO ratio and the temperature. It does not depend upon the concentration or number of chains. It does not depend upon so like independent of chain length. So, it is very important it is independent of chain length. So, you have the initiation propagation continues with alpha alpha termination continues by 1 minus alpha. Okay. So, we moving ahead. So, a similar distribution why am I discussing this Anderson Flourish Cools distribution because a similar distribution takes part in the alkene. So, instead of CH4 you get this C2H6 you get the different olefins. So, how the olefins are produced this will also depend upon the chain propagation probability and the chain termination probability. So, it has been saying that the C10 to C18 fraction also is used for forming useful intermediate whereas the C4 C8 fraction has low commercial value. So, like uh, low commercial value means even though we say that C4 C10 has a good de market demand, but the commercial value in terms of commercial value the C10 C8. So, it means C18 that is used for detergents. So, this can large uh, even if the demand is more in terms of C10 to C18. But uh, well, while the C20 plus fraction is not mark cannot be marketed, so these long chain alkenes cannot be marketed on its own. So, what they do is it is advantageous to mix the latter fraction. So, latter fractions means uh, we mix these two. So, you mix C20 plus plus C4 to C8, you mix them, you mix them to form C10 to C18. Okay, because the demand is on on C10 to C18. So what you do, you C20 plus has limited market demand. C4 to C8 has low commercial value. I mean the demand is more, but the commercial respect it is low. So that's why these two may be clapped together to form C10 to C18. 
okay. So now the issue is okay you are using ethene as a raw material, you are producing variety alkenes. So how do you do this? Because you will have distribution based on Anderson for, uh, schools method. Now what you do is you try to separate these components based on their boiling points and then send to what we called is a reaction chamber where two reactions occur. One is your isomerization, another is your metathesis. So isomerization I already have discussed that is when I talk about isomerization I am talking about double bond isomerization and the other reaction is metathesis. So these two reaction that is why are important. First is oligomerization, then is isomerization and then is metathesis. So isomerization double bond produces an equilibrium mixture of internal alkenes. Metathesis is the transformation of alkenes into al alkenes. So of any alkenes into specific alkenes of different sizes. So in these cases metathesis what happens the double bonds are broken, double bonds are broken, new bonds are also formed simultaneously. So this is why this reaction is very important, okay. So let us go into this metathesis reaction in detail. So we have discussed the metathesis reaction, what is it? It involves the transformation of alkenes into alkenes of various sizes, this is the first part double bonds are broken as I just now said, new bonds are formed. Reaction occurs via carbene complexes resulting in a slightly more complex network of reactions. For example, this example we will take and discuss in detail, the metathesis of propene produces ethene and butene. Now this reaction was the earliest metathesis reaction carried out by Philips Petroleum is a company. It discovered this reaction to convert the propene the cheapest of the alkenes into the more expensive ethene and butene. So this is historically called the triolefin process. So this process is called the triolefin process. But however, this has been discontinued due to the rise in demand for propene because of the because they produced ethene butene from propene. But the demand for propene has increased. So obviously, this reaction has less value. But you can convert the other way around, you can convert ethene and butene back to propene. However, we will see the process. So this is the reaction, it is an metathesis overall is an equilibrium reaction that is fundamentally thermoneutral. What do you mean by thermoneutral? It is neither exothermic, neither endothermic. And when the price of the propene rose, it become advantageous to perform the process in reverse, okay. So it means this is one side of the reaction where ethene and propene reacted to form butene, okay. So here you have ethene and butene converting to propene where the total delta H is 0 that is it is uh, homonuclear. So like this the ethene butene, so this such reactions that is ethene butene metathesis process. So you have ethene here and you have butene here, ethene plus butene gives this propene. This particular process is licensed by ABB Lumus as the olefin conversion technology. We call this OCT. This is licensed as OCT and it is licensed by IFP Institute of Frankas Paris, IFP as a metaphor process. So this is that process R1, R2 plus R3, R4 is a reversible process. It forms R1, R3 and R2, R4. This is called the metathesis of alkenes where R1, R2, R3, R4 or H, CH3, CH2, CH3 likewise. So let us see the ethene butene metathesis. So if you see the first metathesis reaction, let us see uh, what is the equilibrium composition of the ethene to propene to butane. So let us see the metathesis reaction in the case as is listed. So what we have, these are the compositions in uh, percentages 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Uh, so, if I take a equilibrium composition of ethane to propane to 2, this is actually ethene, okay. This is ethene and this is your 2 butene. So, you see with the conversion of propane and this to ethene, it does not change much with temperature. The distribution is similar. 
with ethene to butene to uh, cis to butene. So, we can say this is due to the fact that if you see the reaction, we saw that the conversion of this alkenes to this individual olefins are thermonuclear. It means there is no exothermic neither it is endothermic reaction. So, it means that that is why the composition does not change much with the temperature. So, this is the OCT process. So, in the OCT process there are three parts, you have the reactor this side, you have the ethene column and then you have the propene column. So, what you have is the feed first, the ethene and butene, the two feed coming together. The feed and recycle ethene are mixed with feed and recycle butene. So, ethene and butene both are coming from the distillation columns, okay. both are coming from the respective butene columns. So, this is the butene recycle feed which is coming here and this is the ethene recycle. So, they are mixed with the fresh feed ethene and butene before entering the fixed bed reactor. Now, what happens because the issue is in this reactor the majority of butene feeds contain not only 2 butenes, but also 1 butene and some other C4 components. So, it may consist this butene recycle 1 butene, 2 butene like that. So, there may be several types of butene. So, the catalyst should be designed in such a manner they can convert all of them. So, that is why this thing is why it is required. So, you mix them to then send it to this part take away the heat of the product from here. So, if they take up the heat although if it, it is almost thermonuclear, but it the temperature will be a bit uh, I mean it is still it is around 530 Kelvin. Ah, so, in the reactor, so what you do is uh, you take up this heat just let, let, let the heat pass through and heat up the feed and go to the furnace so that you reach that temperature of greater than 530 Kelvin. So, at this pressure 325 bar you send the feed to the reactor. Okay. So, in the reactor it contains a catalyst that catalyzes the isomerization of 1 butene to 2 butane. Okay. So, it means in the metathesis reactor it will contain a catalyst which catalyzes the isomerization of 1 butene to 2 butene. So, this should be butene not butane because we are not talking about any, any hydrocarbon we are only talking about olefin. So, it means it is now catalyzing 1 butene to butene, the output is cooled and ethene is extracted for recycling. So, why it is doing for 1 butene to butene? Because if you all have 1 ethene and 1 butene, so the metathesis reaction may not occur. So, you should have different internal alkenes. So, that is what it is doing in the reactor. So, the output is cooled and ethene is extracted for recycling. Okay. So, it means in this particular output so, it is coming out here, it is cooled, okay, the remaining solution goes to the other column, propene column and the ethene. So, you have the ethene, unconverted ethene. So, it only works, so obviously it, for ethene you cannot have a isomerization reaction. The isomerization reaction usually takes place in case of butene. So, all this 1 butene, 2 butene is inside this, the remaining ethene is taken apart and it is sent back to the initial feed while some amount is purged. So, in the propene column, so now you have the propene column this one. So, we have done with the butene column, this is the propene column. In the propene column, polymer grade propene of high purity is obtained by separating the recycled butenes. Okay. So, you separate out the butenes, so you get propene which is the desired product. Okay. So, a small portion is purged to eliminate butanes, isobutanes and heavier substances. So, you may have some formation of butane, isobutane, butane of the catalyst. So, you can purge them, the butane purge is there, the remaining part you again go for the recycling of the butane. So, this is the OCT process, okay. that is way how you can produce propene. So, here you are what you are producing a primary product is propene from a mixture of ethene and butene. So, if I compare the process, this is the OCT process and metaphor process, the reactor is fixed bed and the moving bed in the case of metaphor. The catalyst used is WO3 and silica plus MgO, this MgO is used as an additional catalyst for double bond isomerization because this double bond isomerization means I am talking about 1 butene to 1 butene to 2 butene. Okay. Phases, well OCT has a gaseous phase reaction while metaphor has a liquid phase reaction. Temperatures around 530, the temperature for metaphor is lesser than 530.
pressures are around 30 bars and this pressure is around 60 bars. The butene conversion is close to 60 to 75 percent in OCT, around 63 for meta 4 and propene conversion is the highest, it is 95. So the conversion of propene is the highest. So in this case, if you see, uh, when I made up this butene conversion, this propene conversion, it is not actually conversion, I can say it is, uh, well, I have not written ethene conversion, so maybe I will write reword it. I can write here as instead of propene uh, conversion, I write here as propene selectivity. So propene selectivity means the product which you are sending as a feed. So it is highly selective and it is producing 95 percent of pure propene, where the data for metaphor is not available. So several businesses have linked the OCT process with naphtha crackers to produce to boost propene production. It is possible to enhance the propene to ethene yield from 0.5 to 0.65 per kg or kg of ethene to as much as 1.12 per kg of propene. So per kg propene nowadays it is only 0.5 kg produced, they want to increase it to 1 kg from 0.5. That is what it is possible now technologies are there to increase the yield. So this is the catalytic process for the oligomerization of ethene. So if you see this is the starting material ethene. Now and you have this, you have the this is the catalyst. So actual catalyst is this, this is the actual catalyst. So if you see there are the process where uh, there are several steps uh, involved. The first step here is I can say this coordination, okay. So this is the coordination step. It means you are uh, in the NIH, this nickel hydrogen bond. Uh, it is getting coordinated with the incoming ethene molecule, okay. Once it does that, then you have uh, you know, this particular, again another molecules of ethene gets added and you have two steps of reaction happening. We can say the insertion as well as isomerization, insertion and isomerization. insertion plus to produce linear alkenes. Then further addition of ethene, if you again, if a, whenever it is added, it is called coordination. So this ethene molecules is co again getting coordinated, again you have this same, uh, what you called, uh, you know, this uh, insertion plus isomerization to provide a long chain, okay. So this is what it gives. So if suppose the reaction is terminated here, it will give this power compound. If the reaction is terminated here, it will give a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon alkene and this may give the 4 carbon alkene. So like that always coordination and then insertion isomerization, okay. Now if you keep on adding different alkenes, so we call this as the propagation step. Propo Now this propagation steps is what we know as this anderson flory schools method. It means the distribution is decided here because these are number of reaction happening in simultaneously one after one or so it will have a number of insertion. So it may have insertion here, here, here based on their chain length. So this based on this n, okay, n, n1, n2, n3. Okay. So it means based on this insertion, this we called as the propagation step. Once the propagation set completes, you see we will have a particular uh, chain getting attached. So this chain then actually getting beta elimination, we call this as beta elimination process. It is actually elimination process, so where you have the uh, the oligomers obtained, the required desired chain length of the oligomerization. So we have the first the coordination step, insertion, isomerization step, again coordination, then the propagation. So this gets complete. So kindly remember the important thing is the successive insertion of ethene, successive insertion of ethene molecule, this is ethene not ethene, successive insertion of ethene molecule in the nickel hydride bonds. 
So, in the nickel to hydride this particular attachment the ethene molecule gets attached. So, if I want to discuss more about this isomerization metathesis, it may be clear here. So, this is called the isomerization reaction. So, if you see the only the location of the double bond changes, but if suppose it can also be something like this, see 1, 2, 3, the chain length remains same, but the position of double bond can go from uh, 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 position, okay. the chain length remains same, this is called double bond isomerization. Now, you may ask why do you require it, because you, you require it because then only you will get different chains of oligomers, because uh, you need to do some different isomers, so that you can found a find out different lengths, okay. because in this reaction which I just now talked, which is the elimination reaction. So, you may have the elimination based on those chains. So, this chains requires different uh, double bond at different positions. Then metathesis is like combination of two alkenes to form a single alkene, single smaller alkene like that this is another reaction. It may also form two alkenes, different alkenes or you may have similar chains combining together to get one longer chain alkene and one smaller chain alkene. All these are examples where you have the one butene, one butene, so one butene and one decene as a starting material. Okay. So, one butene and one decene as a starting material means this is a butene and this is a decene. Okay. So, this is your decene molecule, this is a butene molecule, butene, one butene to two butene, this is a decene molecule. Okay. So, moving ahead. So, let us now see the Sharp process. Okay. The Sharp process we have the oligomerization reactor here. As I told you, there are three things which are happening. What is it? One is the, uh, the, meta, the oligomerization reactors, then the isomerization reactors and then the metathesis reactions. So, three reactions. So, you can remember oligomerization, isomerization and this meta, metathesis reaction. Okay. So, if you see this oligomerization reactor, what you have is this, a polar solvent is there the oligomerization reaction proceeds at a rate determined by the rate of catalyst addition. So, the way you are adding the catalyst that will govern the rate of oligomerization reaction. So, this is not a single reactor, this may be number of reactors in series. Okay. So, I have given the one feed as ethene, another feed as catalyst, fresh catalyst and the recycled catalyst, then the solution sample is taken to the phase separator where what you do is you separate out ethene, compress it and then again send back as a feed. So, this is your feed solution. Okay. So, the conditions are um, as I told you 350 to 390 Kelvin at 70 to 140 bar pressure. So, between the reactors you have a water cooled heat exchanger which removes the reaction heat. It is not shown here, but you have some uh, heater to remove the reaction heat. In the next step, the products when they find their way out to the phase separator is separated, the unconverted ethene is removed from the two liquid phase. So, this is the unconverted ethene and it is recycled back as feed. Once separated from one alkene products, so this catalyst is separated from the one alkene products, separated out. If it is separated out, it is put back into the oligomerization reactor. Okay, This is the way. So, it means what is the product you are sending now? You are sending the C4 plus. When I talk of C4 plus, it may be C4 plus 220, C4 to C20 in the shop process. Then let us see how it proceeds. Two distillation columns, here we have two distillation columns. The one alkenes are separated into the desired product function. So, it is something like that. You have the olive oligomerization reactions here. So, then you have the distillation column, then you the isomerization reaction, then the metathesis reaction and finally the product. So, this is the I mean this is the way it proceeds. So, now if you see in step 1, what does the first distillation column do? So, all the products are coming here, the step 1 it will just separate out two things. First is from the lower upper end it will separate out C4 to C10. So, based on the distillation, because they are differing in the distillation, that is the boiling point. So, you can take out C4 and C10 alkenes from the topmost part 
and in between the middle part you take out C12 to C18 fraction which may be useful for hydroformylation reaction especially in the use of detergents. So, a portion of C4 C10 fraction is mixed with C20 plus fraction in order to undergo isomerization and metathesis. Approximately 90 percent of one alkenes are isomerized into internal alkenes. Now, let us see what happens. So, you have the distillation column, you have three products, one is C4 to C10, C12 to C18. So, the heavier ones are then sent here. So, it means like other than these two remaining is sent to the metathesis reactor. So, this is metathesis will be later. First, you do a isomerization. So, if you see this is the isomerization reactor, this is the metathesis reactor. So, isomerization what it first it will do isomerization reaction how because see the C4 C10 which is taken apart from the distillation column is sent back a part is sent back to the isomerization reactor. So, with the C4 C10 plus C20 plus they will join together and do a isomerization reaction and with this it will send to the metathesis reaction. So, what it will do C4 C10 and all these isomerization once they are complete they will combine themselves and form a solution and sent back to the I mean not sent back it sent forward to the another distillation column which actually what it does is the primary product. So, approximately 90 percent of one alkynes are isomerized as internal alkenes. So, all these products are isomerized 90 percent. So, those chain lengths which is less than 11 carbon atoms are again sent back to the metathesis reactor for the metathesis reaction to carry out. Because uh, you are having some heavier compounds which is coming that is C20 plus. So, you need some lighter means uh, lower chain length compounds you send back to the metathesis reactor. Subsequent metathesis of the lower and higher internal alkenes yields a mixture with a variable carbon atom distribution combining 11 to 15 percent per pass of the desired C11 to so, it means at a single pass you will get 11 to 15 percent of internal alkenes in weight percent, 11 to 15 percent of the desired C11 to C14 linear internal alkenes. So, please understand there are two aspects to it. You should remember this is your metathesis reactor, this is the isomerization reaction. Isomerization will convert or it will just take up shift the double bonds while in this there is no shifting of double bonds, but the combination of two fractions to. So, it means that in this if I want to say here C4 in the this reaction you have this C4 to C10 and combining with let us say C20 for example, C20 I write minus here all these are getting combined to form C11 to C14 ok this is what it is happening. So, those compounds which are greater than C14 they are again sent back into the after the distillation column for further isomerization. So, this uh, it is isolated through this distillation and transformed through the detergent alcohol through hydroformylase. So, this means these compounds are then sent and converted to detergent alcohol through hydroformylation. Lighter alkenes are returned to the metathesis reactor ok. Lighter alkenes are returned to the metathesis reactor. So, it means that is what I have just now said these are the lighter alkenes to the metathesis reactor whereas the heavier alkenes undergo isomerization. So, the heavier alkenes means it goes here it ends up here. So, it means it is going to the isomerization reactor. Again these are recycled. So, keeps on doing until you get the C11, C14 sharp range of internal alkenes. So, overall the shop process I like to lay out some points it is similar to Rodenberg this process one polonic formulation of propene which we did in the previous class. Shop process an example of biphasic catalysis. Now, this biphasic catalysis means the chelet ring or chelet ligand is dissolved in a polar solvent. The polar solvent uses 1,4-butendiol in which the non-polar products are nearly insoluble. So, it uses a biphasic organic liquid liquid system which is one of the defining characteristic of the shell process. Due to the coupling of three distinct reaction that is oligomerization, isomerization and metathesis reaction, the process has a great degree of adaptability allowing the carbon number distribution and the tailoring of the amount of van alkenes produced. So, it means uh, with this three reactions you can fix C4 plus then you can fix C11 to C14 
and you can fix C20 minus. So how much of each you want? So based on the reaction conditions of these three reactions that is oligomerization, isomerization and metathesis, the shock process that is why they are very useful and then it has been widely used industrially worldwide and uh, with this we actually conclude this lecture. I please go through this particular uh, article which is from the shell itself, shell company. So the shell higher olefins process, so you can go there, this is freely available in general of chemical education. In this you are given a detailed description of the catalytic process and also the entire process diagram. Thank you. Thank you.